reef here, guys. You wanted to see back engines and back room stuff? We got it for you. I'm handing you to Jonathan. Hi, everyone. Today we'll be uh, changing our skimmer feed pump uh, that provides the flow to the skimmers. Uh, it pr produces about 300 gallons per minute of flow split between both skimmers. This is a seven and a half horsepower engine. Uh, we're, we're replacing a five horsepower that we've been running as a spare. Uh, we had a seven and a half that uh, completely seized up on us uh, and we only had a five horsepower spare. So we've been running the skimmers with a little less flow through them. Uh, the bigger horsepower will allow us to overcome the head pressure a little better being that it's all the way in the sub basement and there's a lot of turns to get up here. Uh, it's running at like 40 feet of head to get up to the skimmers, plus the Venturis that are actually on. Yeah, uh, we find uh, just the power of the foam is, is a little greater with, with, with the seven and a half horsepower. Yeah, definitely. Than the five. Yeah. So we're here testing another product. We want to improve the violets in either the big tank or maybe the 2500. So Jonathan, what do we have here? So here we have the Orphic Amazonius 960, which is a 320 watt LED. Um, Andrew really liked the Orphic U-Boss and we had this uh, specially made with as close to that color array as we can get with each of the 80 watt clusters being just their UV blue plus. Um, and we have the 120 degree optics in here because we're gonna try it on the big tank to start and just see if we get a little more of that old school Atinic 03 look with the violet and, from and it. And the spread. And the spread, because we don't need it particularly for the par, we're just using right. it for the color, color, color really and trying to get a little more fluorescence out of the corals. Um, it's available in a few different optics and a few different colors, but we're just using it to give Andrew a little more UV violet pop. Guys, when you have a 17,000 gallon tank, it's hard to find the right LED that will give you the pop. I think we found it with the new Orphic 4 Puff Light. Check that out. We're about to turn that up. Turn it up real good. There it is. Andrew, hit it. Turning off all other LEDs besides Orphic. All right, let's check it out from the front, guys. Andrew, you ready to do this? We're gonna yeah. turn it up. Pop it. Wow. wow. This is just one fixture. We know that we could put about four to six fixtures in here and have pop that we've never seen from an LED standpoint. What's the next uh, thing on the agenda for the tank? Some chemistry that we're dealing with, right? Chemistry. Uh, working on iron and the ozone. Um, we are working on obviously these lights and this pop. Um, and uh, hopefully then to the 2500. Wow. The Biz 400s. If anyone knows where Alex is, we're waiting on our 400s, my friend. Well, think about it. We never stop perfecting know, our of hobby. Course, of course. That's never going to stop. So what's the next order of business? Well, I'll tell you what... Um, what just came in was uh, an ICP test. Still not getting uh, detectable iron, which is not yeah. unusual, particularly for ozone. Yeah. But we'll get to see whether we can lower the ozone. I spoke to Andre, he thinks, uh, Andre Mueller, uh, he thinks we should lower our ozone and it will help us with the trace elements. Well, let's talk about ozone for folks who don't know ozone really well. A lot of hobby, rarely do you see hobbyists use ozone and the reason is you see ozone mainly being used in aquariums. And the reason when you have tanks this size with this kind of depth, 
without a lot of carbon, clarity which, of the which water. Which we want to get away from the carbon because of the head and ladder line disease. Right, right. You know, you need clarity of the water, and ozone really helps, and you right. know, uh, also helps your skin mate. Yep. Which I think we'll show them. Yep. Um, but you know, it's it. This is See, not an easy thing. To no. Get. Remember, we went up in ozone first, uh, and then got the oxygen reactor, and it, it appears that we didn't. All we needed was the oxygen reactor. We didn't really need to go up in grams. Exactly. Yeah, and then we also saw some things with the fish. We don't know if it's related with the Popeyes. Correct, correct. But so. in the meantime, uh, by lowering the ozone uh, concentration, I think we'll do better with the trace elements and the iron. Yeah. And I believe we won't overshoot our set point. Right. All right, let's take them to the back and show them, show them what we have going on here yep. this week. We'll see some foam. Yeah. Say hello to the camera, Yeltsin. Hello. hello. So look at this thick foam, Patty. That's juicy. That is some good foam right there. It, clearly the new pump thickens up the foam. Right. And as you can see, no ozone is being run right now. Both these lights are off because we're at our set point already at about 340, 350 ORP. And uh, one of these is doing it, not two. Our set point. We've also reduced the amount of oxygen going in because we're only using one unit now. So we were, we're using four scheduled feet an hour of each uh, ozone unit. We're down to four just on one and we were able to cut the oxygen down from four liters to two liters because of that. And hopefully because of this, the tank will be more stable um, the ozone will be not on, off, on, off. It will sort of be on longer, but, but at lower amounts. And we hope that helps the gas situation. And we'll get back to you whether that does. And the iron situation. We, ori we originally got the two units because we were using an air dryer, which was just using atmospheric air. And then we went with the oxygen concentrator because the air dryer, it was just too humid in here for it. So now with that being pure oxygen, we don't need as much unit anyway because we're creating more ozone per liter of air. 